1991 was the next year because I was trying to track down the next home run. Who was that home run off of? Do you recall? You always remember number one. Do you remember number two? Uh, oh, man. He loves to play this game. Rob said he remembered everything, so I wanted to see. Number two. <laughs> um, 91? 91. Yeah. Well, it couldn't have been off of me because I wasn't in the big leagues yet. All right, all right, all right. 91. Can you give me a city? I got nothing for you. I just, I, I, it, from all the oh, recent, I, yeah. I, I'm, no. No, zero. I, I, it's again one of those things. It's either it sticks in the brain or it doesn't. But what will stick in the brain, which we talked about, is it's funny because uh, it's much like, a, you know, when you have a hockey enforcer, right? You have the Bob Proberts in this world and they go and they're all meant for fighting when they're when they're in the NHL, for example. But you go and speak to them. What were you like at jun- in the juniors in the uh, level? They're like, I was a scorer, but I had to adapt to what was needed. And I, cause I said to Rob, I said, all of a sudden you go down to Oklahoma City in 93, 94, 17 bombs every year. I said to, I said to myself, how did this happen? I, I looked through the roster and I said, I know what it is. 1993, bye bye Balboni was his teammate with 34 <laughs> home runs. And Rob was second with 17. Balboni must have like rubbed his bat or something for good luck. Do you recall the days of Balboni? The, the home runs in Oklahoma were flying like fine wine. What was that like out there? Well, uh, and and I, I told you the other day, in two years, Steve, two years, I hit 34 home runs in o- for Oklahoma. I did not hit one home run to right field at, at home. <laughs> I'm a left-handed hitter. The wind blew 30 miles an hour to left field, and I couldn't cut the hawk. I wasn't strong enough to cut the hawk. I'd only seen maybe two or three homers all, you know, in those two years right. go off to right field. Um, so you hit a, a little jam shot to left field. It either goes off the wall or over the fence. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to carve the ball the other way at home. And on the road, I could pull the ball. So um, now Steve was an awesome, awesome teammate. Miles you were as well, Steve, but we're talking about Bye Bye Balboni right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> yes. Uh, he was an awesome teammate. Uh, the things that he could do at, at the plate, he was fearless at the plate. He stood like two inches away from the inside, the lack of the plate. And he was, you know, 255 pounds. And, you know, he, he, he uh, a big leader on a triple A team. You know, it was, it was Steve Babon. And I got a chance to, to hit uh, behind him, which made life, Pretty easy for me. And Steve Carsey, did you ever pitch to Balboni? Do you recall? I can't remember. I don't believe I did, but um, he might have snuck in there somewhere. The man looked like the bat looked like a toothpick in his hands. He was massive. Like I remember. But those are the guys today that they love, right? I mean, the Dave Kingmans, the Balbonis will give you the three-run homer, strike out two hundred times. Like it used to be an embarrassment for for players to strike out and walk back to the dugout. Now it's commonplace. It's like, oh, you know, the Joey Gallows and the Kyle Schwarbers. Hey, he's gonna hit me forty three. He's gonna get an OPS. He's gonna walk as long as he gets on base and hits home runs. We're okay. If he strikes out two hundred times, that's fine with us too. Just because the way the the numbers dictate the game today, and and that's how it's has changed a little bit. I mean, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but Kyle Schwarber, you know, hitting under 200 somehow still has like a 400 uh, on base percentage. The man walks, either walks or home runs. There's nothing in the middle with him. And he hits his 50 bombs or so, and people love him. And he's a leadoff hitter. I mean, like a 170, 180 leadoff hitter, but he's got his value. And anybody who watched the playoffs last year and uh, in previous years, uh, the guy's magical. He's absolutely magical. And other people besides Balboni, Rusty Greer, Dan Peltier, another name from the from the books, another rookie that couldn't miss, and you just never, never, ever know. Now, fast forwarding now, because we're we're gonna jump a little bit timelines back and forth. Uh, we we had Kareem Garcia on and talked about his uh, baseball odyssey and made it over, I believe, to Korea, uh, played in the Mexican League, and you made it over to Japan. There was a baseball called uh, there was a baseball movie called uh, Mr. Baseball with Tom Selleck, and they said to him, "You've been traded out east." He goes, "Cleveland?" And they go, "No, the far east." <laughs> how how did you make it to Japan? 
And mm-hmm. by the way, 25 and 26 bombs out there, Steve. Yeah. Small ballparks. Uh, and uh, that. Uh, how did I get there? How did I get there? Um, I watched the, the movie. I watched Mr. Baseball. Seriously? And just like that. No, swear to God. I was joking. No, okay. no, no, no. This is swear to God. I watched the movie. And the next day I came in and Benny DiStefano was one of my teammates in AAA. I was in, in Oklahoma City. Benny, Benny DiStefano. I said, hey, Benny, I watched Mr. Baseball. Is that is that like for real or what, what, they, what went on in, in the movie? He goes, yeah, Deuce, you'd really, really like it over there. And that was the very first time that I ever even thought that, oh, maybe that would be kind of cool. Well, two months later, there was a Japanese scout at our game. And uh, I got a call from a, a, a Japanese agent if I had any interest in going over there. And that's kind of just how the ball rolled. Uh, at the end of the year, I got taken off. I got put on. Uh, I got sent down from Texas. Let me back up, sorry. I got sent down from Texas to Oklahoma City. Uh, so I got taken off the, the 40 man roster. At the end of the year, the uh, baseball strike was in 93. I got put back on the big league roster so that I didn't have to get paid for September. All right, they play the game, play the shell game. Okay. Uh, at the end of the year, I got taken back off the roster when the season was over. So they initially put me, they essentially put me on strike. It was like I, I went into my manager's office and said, you know, what do I do? And he said, well, I guess you just go home. Okay. Well, uh, right at the end of the season, I uh, got a call from a, a, the Japanese agent again, and they offered me a two-year contract to go over to play in, in Tokyo. So it was like, Oscar De La Hoya, I'm out. Oh. Well, Kip Gross was probably uh, aware of this because he decided to go a year early and trailblaze for you a bit because he played with the fighters, the Nippenham fighters of the Japanese League, and he was there in 94 to 98. You show up there. I assume he was your best friend and showed you around? Uh, I didn't see Kip very much. Oh. Uh, he was a starting pitcher. He was on his own program. He he did his thing. He lived uh, next to me in, in the uh, apartment complex that we lived in. But I very rarely saw him uh, during the course of the season. In spring training, yes. Uh, but uh, he was on his own program. He, he came and he pitched. Uh, and uh, when he didn't pitch, he didn't really have to go there. He could go to the minor league complex and work out. And it was just uh, they, they gave us a lot of leeway as far as uh, our own program and what we're used to doing and just show up and help the team win. And you know, be a good teammate. Um, have have the wall, you know, which uh, I I thought I did a pretty good job of that. Totally different scenario. You are there to help them win. Period. Uh, it's uh, it, may, it may have changed since then, but back then we only had three foreigners, and it was it was either you. Uh, you know, you pitch good or you hit good or next, 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 next. Uh, got, Very similar uh, to winter ball. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I was okay with that. I played four years in Venezuela and it was uh, play well, help us win or go home. Yeah. Dave Justice, gone from my <laughs> winter ball team. Uh, Greg Vaughn, gone from my winter ball team. These guys were super big league players, mm-hmm. but the the standard is totally different. Totally different when you go in the, the foreign leagues. Now, over your career, Rob, uh, played with Toronto, the California Angels, not the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, not the Anaheim Angels, but actually the California Angels, which were my favorite version of the Angels, Texas, Seattle, Philadelphia, and Montreal. Quick lineup of the names that you have played with over your career. Some of the big names, Bly Levin, Jim Abbott, Padre Rodriguez, Jose Canseco, Palmero, Juan Gonzalez, Chris Carpenter, Ken Griffey Jr., Edgar Martinez, Raul Abanez, Scott Rowland, 
Bobby Abreu, Kurt Schilling, uh, Fernando Tatis Sr., Vladimir Guerrero Sr., Milton Bradley, remember him? Tim Raines, Will Clark, and Kevin Brown. You played on some pretty stacked teams. I can imagine walking into that uh, Texas uh, 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 dugout. I know Steve played with Texas as well. Something magical about that era, about the Rangers, you know, as far as that heavy hitting lineup. Uh, from those names I said, anybody stick out as far as people that uh, either you roomed with or hung out with a lot? Oh, man. Stories about all, uh, almost every one of those guys. Almost every one of those guys. Um, you want to start with Jose Canseco? Canseco. He he wanted to be the dealer uh, in, in uh, Blackjack. Oh, I was like, wait, 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 wait. Where he are we going with this? Yes. No, he was the best. Blackjack, was, Blackjack. Okay. Blackjack, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, he was a really good teammate. He really was. He was down to earth and uh you could talk to him um i don't did steve do you ever get a chance to play with him uh yeah in uh in oakland in i oakland, did right? in 19 in 1993 when i got traded from toronto to oakland the last couple uh months of the season i was i was able to uh to be a teammate of his yeah i, I and i don't know what he was like in oakland uh but when when I joined the, the Rangers. Obviously, it was it was Jose Canseco. He was mm-hmm. he was the dude. Um, man, he he was pretty easy going. You know, he really was. Um, I had like zero issues with. Him. And you know, fifteen years later, I saw him again. He was the same. You know, yeah, he got into issues. Yeah, everyone's got issues, but. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't have any problem with almost any of my teammates throughout the course of the year, or I'm sorry, throughout the course of my career. So a lot of these guys. Um, uh, let's see, who else? You, you give me give me a couple more names. So uh, Randy Johnson, Vladdy, uh, Vladdy Senior, uh, Vladdy Senior. Let's do Vladdy yeah. Senior. Sure. Vlad, Vladdy Senior. We're in we're in Montreal, and it's a 705 start. Well, at seven o'clock, what do they do at seven o'clock? They play the national anthems. So American and Canadian national anthems. Well, at seven o'clock, where is he? He's playing home run derby on the, the in in uh, uh, on his little TV that he had his little I don't even know PlayStation or whatever. Sega Genesis at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's yeah. himself. He's playing home run derby, and I was like, dude. What are you doing? And I'm an old guy at the time. I said, dude, what are you doing? He goes, ah, I just got to go deep a couple times. And he's on his way out. It's 7.04. And he's on, running out of the clubhouse, putting his hat on, tying his belt up, and runs out to right field. Like, that's how gifted the dude was. It was like, okay, no big deal. Riffy never really played catch. He just, oh, this side of the Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't, you know, I, I very rarely saw him play a, a lot of catch. You know, he wanted to hit and hit and hit, but he didn't stretch. He didn't do anything. He just, all right, let's go play. Game on. Uh, gosh, I, you know, all those names, it's, uh, I'm very, very fortunate to play with those guys and, and, uh, you know, you sit back and, and you think about it sometimes, and I don't relish on it. I, I don't, uh, you know, if, if you were to walk me, by me on the street, you wouldn't know that I, you know, played the big leagues or did whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but just the, the experiences of, of being in the clubhouse and, and, and watching these guys work, uh, I'm very, very fortunate. And Steve, several of those names, I assume, were either teammates of yours or opponents on other teams where you faced. Uh, baseball's a very small world, especially when you are in that same era, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, uh, you know, Ricky was a teammate, Canseco, um, you know, the, a bunch of guys in Oakland uh, in the early years, the Dave Stewart's, the Carney Lansford's, the Mike Bordick's, uh, Dave Henderson, uh, who I'm sure he's played with a run across. Um you know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things, you know, when a guy plays two or three 
generations and in the decades of the 80s and 90s, you get to watch them play and then you get to play against them. Same with the 90s and 2000s. It's uh, you know very similar. But yeah, we've come across uh, many a great players and played with many a great players uh, throughout our own careers. Especially when you play for as long, uh, you know, uh, across as many levels. Rob, 19 seasons. Only 12 Canadians have ever reached that level. That's quite a distinction. 197 bombs, 816 walks, 267 average, 359 OBP, 449 slug. Very nice numbers. Nothing to scoff at and certainly want to be very, very proud of. You're, you and Denny Boucher are the only people to start with the Jays and with the Expos. All these funny little baseball stats. Uh, Philadelphia, August 1999. You have a distinction of a very special game. How many hits in one game? Five. Five. I think that's the night I face you, Steve. 99. I was in Cleveland. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm I was like, I know, I know. I'm like, man, I gave up that many hits. I don't think I was in the game very long. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm, I'm just playing. Uh, you know what? Uh, we were playing the Padres that night, and I should have got six hits. I should have got uh, Ruben Rivera made a running catch in left center field off the ball I hit to left center. I should have got six hits that night. The bat, uh, the balls from that uh, five hits, are any of them sitting in Cooperstown currently? Mm, no, no. No, no. The only, the only thing that, that of me in Cooperstown is uh the 10 home run game okay so it's nice to have something and i was actually there for fred and scott's uh, induction and my wife has never been to uh, the hall of fame we, we went in there and uh, she said the only thing i want to see is is two things the fanatic and the peaches the rockford peaches oh so there you go the only thing she wanted to see now as well playoffs we can't ever talk about playing in the big leagues without some sort of playoffs you did get a taste of the playoffs 91 jays right and 97 mariners if i'm not mistaken that's what the jersey is behind i gotta tell you i was outside the twins clubhouse when they beat the jays to advance mm. and scott erickson and curry pocket came out several hours afterwards they did not come out of the clubhouse right away and they were they were uh, smiling and pretty red in the face and uh, very happy. But what is the feeling getting to experience the playoffs when, you know, I think at the end of the day, anybody who's ever played sports wants to advance, wants to win it all. So how did it feel being able to make the playoffs with those two teams? Well, obviously the, 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 the goal is to win a World Series. That's the goal. When you start in spring training, everyone starts – uh, zero and zero. It's like, oh, this year we're going to do it. Uh, this year we got a chance. Well, everyone does have a chance. Um, but to to uh, to get to a playoff scenario and not win a World Series, uh, that's that leaves uh, that ride home. You know, because I used to always drive home, and whenever I wherever I whether I was in Seattle or Texas or at the end of the year, I drove home. And the season was over when I hit the door at, my, at, at home. So I got a chance to, to you know, reminisce and, and evaluate and what am I going to do? And as soon as I got home, that was it. I didn't, I didn't think about the season. I prepared for next season as far as mentally. Um, but, I, you know, in the minor leagues, we won championships. Uh, as as a coach, uh, won uh, uh, a championship, and it's no greater feeling than to go from uh, the beginning of spring training when you got a chance to 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 win something and actually win it, and actually go through the season, all the ups and downs, all the aches and pains, and all the trials and tribulations of a season, and actually. Uh, at the end of the year, be the champion. Now, is there any kind of bittersweet feeling knowing as a Canadian that they wanted it in 92, 93 and saying, why couldn't I just been there one year later? Anything like that? Uh, any thoughts go in your mind that way or no regrets? No, none, none whatsoever. Uh, I, I had a role in 92. I was actually with the Blue Jays in 92. 
and I was traded at the deadline for Mark Eichhorn. Um, I, I had a role on a team. I had 21 at bats. Steve, how about that? I had 21 at bats <laughs> August 1st. I'm in the big yeah. leagues all the time. I'm not on the DL. I'm, I'm the fifth outfielder. I had more defensive innings than I had pinch or I, than I had at bats. So uh, the beginning of May or mid May, I got tired of not doing anything. So I asked our equipment manager, Jeff Ross, I said, Jeff, can you order me some catcher's equipment? He was like, okay, well, what for? <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to catch the starters pens. He said, all right. You know, so he ordered me a full set of gear. I went down, I caught Dave Steve, uh, Morris, uh, who else was there? All, uh, Jimmy Key, all, all the starters. I, I caught all the pens. So who did I kind of take the workload off? Greg Myers and Pat Borders. So I had a role in helping, you know, our starters, because they would have had to do that workload. And they don't like to catch bullpens. You know, I, I wore it and, and I, I, I would run out there. Uh, Dwayne Ward used to piss me off, by the way. So when he came in the game, it almost never failed that Borders was either on base or, or getting dressed or it was Myers down in the bullpen or somebody. Somebody had to go out and catch Ward out when he came in the, in the, the game. So he's grunting, snorting, and he, uh, his first pitch was always in the dirt. Always in the dirt. And he's throwing a, you know, 95 mile an hour bowling ball. And and it's like, dude. And I asked him one day, dude, I mean, all I got on is, is a mask. That's in first pitch. And I just started just letting it go. If you're going to do that, just, you know, I'm not going to block it or anything. I'm not going to go out there full gear. I just only had a mask on. So that being said, he goes, well, I want to make sure the ball's down. I get it. Totally get it. But uh, I at least felt like I had a role uh, on that team. Uh, I played defense and, you know, I, I worked, you know, did what I had to do during mm -hmm. uh, the BP and 